This Future Cities Africa episode is presented in partnership with OneMap. Visit them at onemap.co.za. As part of the OneMap series on integrated digital mapping, my guest today is Monica Rolo. She's an industrial engineer at Kiro, an independent school network in South Africa. We'll be looking in particular at how spatial analysis can be used to understand and address educational needs. Before we get into that, Monica, welcome. Give us a brief introduction to your role and background. As you said, I studied an undergrad in industrial engineering. And what's amazing about industrial engineering is it kind of gives you a broad overview of a, a wide variety of different fields. And then through that, I kind of developed a passion for data science, optimization, and programming. Um, and then that's kind of why I decided to do a master's. So as I said, it kind of gives you, my undergrad gave me a touch of everything, but then I decided to dive deeper into the data science field. My master's kind of focused on obtaining optimal weighting areas for drivers of transportation network companies. So these are companies like your Uber, um, Taxify, Lyft, et cetera, et cetera. And then these waiting areas were found by using unsupervised learning to cluster historical pickup points. As you can imagine, these historical pickup points are made up of latitude and longitude coordinates. And then that kind of gave me the exposure to um, GIS and spatial analysis. The way I am now, I basically work at Kira Holdings. I'm an industrial engineer there. And then I focus more on, like I said, the, the GIS aspect and the data science, as well as some um, um, project management and managerial aspects. So you proactively use geographical information systems or GIS in what you do at Kira Holdings, but you didn't study GIS. No, so like I said, my master's kind of gave me that little bit of exposure to GIS. And then through that, I kind of understood the impact that GIS can have, even if it is just in a small portion of a study. If I could say anything, it's more that I use GIS to aid in my analysis. So I more used it as a tool just to enhance what I was already doing. And that can be applied to various things. You know, it just gives that extra um, aspect or elements to the analysis that wasn't present before. So what societal need does Kira Holdings address? Kira Holdings basically um, is an independent school network and our vision is to make independent schooling available to all learners within Southern Africa. And then this is basically done by acquiring schools, developing schools and uh, management of independent schools throughout South Africa, as well as a selected uh, few other areas throughout the African continent. And then through this, we also want to ensure that each learner is accommodated for. And then on top of that, it also adds to the placement of schools. So as you can imagine, we want to place a school that have, where it makes the largest impact. And then that's kind of where the GIS and spatial analysis comes in. So Kiro has got ambitious plans, but there must be some major challenges that you are facing. What, what are some of those and how are you addressing them? The major challenges, as you can imagine, it's a challenge throughout South Africa is basically getting clean, reliable data. So um, if the basis of your analysis is incorrect, so um, for example, the location of learners is incorrect, then the whole analysis is unreliable. For example, determining learner numbers, et cetera, et cetera. If we don't have the correct um, location of the learners, then uh, we won't know exactly the, the type of learner we, we're getting in that school. Um, and then another challenge, like I said, Kiro has a very wide market. It's quite a challenge just trying to make sure that each learner, regardless of their background, regardless of their needs, is accommodated for um, and is satisfied and gets quality education. Um, and then kind of looking at solving these three big major challenges that you've just mentioned, how are you using data analysis, geographical information systems, and these kind of newer type of technologies to solve these problems? The first one, basically getting reliable data. So obviously, if you do have sources that do have reliable data, then that's a uh, first prize. But if you can't, then the next best thing would be to gather the data yourself. So in the form of user forms, and if possible, try to include that geographical component. So 
maybe gather the data on a map. Um, just so again, uh, it adds that extra dimension to the data that you're collecting. And then furthermore, make sure that data collection process, that the fields are all, are, they have very little free text. So limit the user selection just to enhance the, the information and the quality of the information that you're getting. Uh, the second one with regards to understanding the learner better, I think in that aspect, we try to, like I said, plot our learning information. And then through that, when we have our learner location, we can kind of enrich our current learner data to uh, with the area information so that we know, okay, um, this learner comes from this type of area. Um, is there a lot of checkers in the area? Is there a lot of, just so we can better understand what type of learner we're dealing with. And then through that, we can enhance our schools and decide which schools to grow, um, which schools have more potential, and then also how we can market um, certain schools to uh, get more learners of that type. Um, and then furthermore, also evaluate our competitors. So see which schools have large competitors. Maybe that's why, you know, we need to... Um, adjust our, our goals accordingly. Um, so that's definitely how we try to get a better understanding of our learners. And then similarly, when we also know what the needs of our learners are, we can then look at um, how to adjust our existing schools with regards to um, facilities or um, with regards to offerings as well as look at where to place new schools. So like I said, if we, if we plot our learners and we see that there's a, there's a real need for a school in this area, then we can visually be able to say, okay, maybe this is worth looking into. Um, and then that kind of solves our third problem of um, school placement. Uh, so we can look at where there's maybe a real need for independent um, quality schooling that will make a large impact to the learners of the surrounding areas. Can GIS be applied to solve problems in or assist with decisions made in other industries? Oh yeah, definitely. GIS is just a tool to kind of enhance um, existing analysis and kind of give that extra component to the data that we already have. So for example, you know, I mentioned the placement of schools. This can be applied to any facilities or warehouses to um, place a, a warehouse in optimal location as to um, minimize traffic and reduce the lead time uh, between uh, facilities. And then furthermore, it can also be used in um, maybe crime. So looking at where crime hotspots um, occur and as you can imagine without plotting this on a visual uh, map then it'll just be like rows on an excel sheet of incidents that have occurred so by just visualizing it on a map we can already see ah oh, this is an area with a, a high crime um, and then they know exactly which areas to to monitor so again it can be applied in a wide range of uh, sectors and industries in similar, similar manners, just to kind of enhance and get that, that better understanding of the data that we already have. So if the, the value is clear and clearly understood, what is standing in the way of everyone adopting these new technologies? If I can compare it to something that I guess we now become familiar with, which is AI and machine learning, when it first came out, everyone was kind of scared of it. So no one really wanted to adopt it because it was this big, scary thing that was going to take over type thing. Now, GIS isn't as, I think, isn't as um, big as AI, but it still has a similar type of feel to it where people are kind of scared to tap into it just because they don't know the capabilities and they feel like you need some hectic qualification to be able to do it. Um, whereas that isn't really the case. Like I said, it's as simple as, plotting points on a map just to kind of get that, that extra comprehension of the data that you have. So I definitely think it's just the fact that people are more um, scared that if they do it, they're going to do it wrong, or um, they feel like it's someone that only someone that can study, only someone that studies it can tap into it type thing. 
Um, so again, I think people, once they, they start learning about it and once they start playing around with it, they'll then be able to see exactly how much value GIS can bring to the companies and the data that they have. So as we progress in time, uh, do you see GIS being used more extensively uh, and it being seen as part of everyone's workflow? Yeah, definitely. So, for example, it can be used to look at, for example, shops near me or, you know, it's, it's stuff that we use every day without even realizing it. Like when we go, especially now we're during COVID times where deliveries and, you know, going out into the world is becoming less and less where we can literally just go, oh, I want to shop at Willys quickly. Okay, um, this is what I need. This is where I am. That's all GIS, trying to get your location, trying to find the Willys nearest to you, and then get a driver to go pick up the, the products there and drop it off at your location. So it's definitely becoming more and more um, important with regards to GIS and trying to find um, whether it's shops near you, or um, yeah, optimal locations. So again, even those companies need to find optimal routes to try and get to all the um, places that they need to deliver to without um, more minimal traffic and with minimal um, petrol. So with regards to all of that, that's all kind of GIS involved. Um, and again, this can be used for, for example, um, with maybe in the medical facilities, maybe looking at if someone has an incident, how to get there as quickly as possible. The applications of it are so broad. And I think it's only when you do something as simple as taking data you have, adding the geographic components and just visualizing it on a map that you can actually see like, wow, this makes so much more sense. Or this is why this was happening. So for example, maybe for us, we could be like plotters and then be like, wow, there's actually no learners surrounding that school. That makes sense. That's why the school wasn't doing it as well. Or uh, maybe there's a school where there's actually, it's booming, this area is doing so well, and we can exactly see which areas we need to nurture more and then which ones we actually need to just maintain. Um, so with regards to that, I definitely think the applications are extremely broad and it definitely has that day-to-day that -day applications, like you were saying, in the future. If you were a manager in an organization, how would you go about encouraging and upskilling your staff to be comfortable with these new kinds of technologies? I think the best way would be to, because we are, you know, the way humans are programmed, we kind of want to see how it will benefit us. So I think if you show them data that they're familiar with, that they've been working with every single day, and you show them how um, GIS can influence it and help them understand it better. So um, like I said, for example, if you're looking at uh, the delivery service, if they want to see um, where all the uh, people that they need to drop off to, if they can see that on a map before even starting their route, they can already get a nice overview of, wow, okay, this is, this is exactly where I must go. That makes sense. Whereas if you just tell them, take route A, B, C, they're following those instructions, but they don't know why. They don't know um, if it's the best route. They don't know if you're wasting their time, et cetera, et cetera. So if you kind of just show them, give them a better understanding of why you're telling them to do what it is, then it makes them more motivated to, to do those exact things, right? So I think the best way to adapt people into GIS and to get them to use it is to show how it'll benefit them um, and then also show them how easy it is to implement. So like I said, it's literally taking latitude and longitude coordinates and plotting it on a map. It's that simple. So I think if you just emphasize that and show them the value that it brings for minimal efforts, then it's honestly, you know, it's a no brainer type thing. 